I'm at the Emirates Airline Festival of Literature and my guest today is an Emmy Award winning actor we know from movies like Braveheart, Mindhunter and Troy. He currently stars as the formidable media mogul and patriarch Logan Roy on the hit TV show Succession. Brian, I recently binge watched Succession so when I got this opportunity to meet you I was so excited. I'm starstruck, but mostly a little bit terrified of you. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is, of course, a testament to the character you play mm -hmm. on the show Succession. Is that the general reaction you've been getting since the show? Yeah, people, the show? people are very uh, uh, kind of, they're always a bit nervous around me, <laughs> when, you know, especially because of Logan, um, who I am nothing like. I mean, he and I are almost, I have great empathy for Logan. <laughs> And I understand Logan, but um, his life and my life are entirely different, you know. I'm sure. But because it's such a strong character and it is etched in everyone's memory, but you have such a rich portfolio of movies, theater, television that you've done. Do you think Succession is, I guess, partly because it is more relevant today, is the most talked about? Probably. I mean, I think uh, one is incredibly, I'm incredibly blessed. I happen to be, I think, working and playing the sort of central character and, and probably the best show on television. Absolutely. And you can't get around that. And there's a, with that, it becomes, there's great responsibility as well. <laughs> and I'm very lucky, I'm very blessed. And, you know, it's so funny. I mean, when I was a young actor, people used to say, oh, Brian, you know, it'll be the long haul for you. I didn't think it was going to be this long. <laughs> <laughs> Your new book, which you're here to promote, Putting the Rabbit in the Hat, I mean, it, it is your story about your childhood, your movie career. You've not been scared to be quite vulnerable while writing the book. What mm. is, would you say, the biggest takeaway that people will get after reading the book? Well, I hope, I mean, the book, the initial impetus for the book was to do with really honoring my parents, my mom and dad. Uh, I, I, and it's something I really believe in. You know, it's the one thing. That, you know, I'm not. I'm not Christian, but the one thing I do believe is honor thy father and thy mother. And for them, it was very tough, uh, and all sorts of things happened which they couldn't have foreseen. And just, I mean, my dad didn't know he was going to die at the age of 51, and my my mom didn't realize that her mental health wasn't as strong as it was. So she was, you know, and it was. It was just one of those situations. And I, ironically, I never felt any adverse. I, I, I just got on with it. You know, I didn't feel, oh, poor me or any of that stuff. I just thought, well, this is the reality. And I've got to move into a different reality. And of course, it's, it's absolutely what an actor does. I and mean, he, he moves into, you know, he will, you, you play a role and you go into that reality of that role. So in a way, in life, you do the same. You, do, you deal with what is given you, the hand that's given you, and you think, oh, this is what I've got. Well, not a very good hand, but I'll, I'll make the best of it. And then it improves, you know. So I feel blessed in that way. I feel very lucky, and I'm, and I'm also very lucky that I had the parents I had who were, who were highly sensitive in their own way. And, and I, I found this wonderful letter from my mom that she wrote. It was a diary entry on the day my father was buried. And she describes their relationship as how they had their little misgivings. Yeah. And that's such an extraordinary phrase, a kind of Victorian phrase about the, the idea that they had misgivings. And basically, my, my father was very, very generous. And my mother, her belief was charity began at home, you know. So there was that kind of schism between them. And I grew up with that. And, uh, but it didn't it didn't hurt me or affect me and I didn't, it was, or stultify me in any way. I just thought that's the reality. I had to deal with it. Was it therapeutic for you to put it down? Oh, yeah, it was cathartic, absolutely. Yeah. But it was also to do with honoring them because of their lives, you know. And, you know, and, and we, all, we all do that with our own children, you know, that we have a certain sense of responsibility towards them. But finally, they're their own creatures and you can only stand by and watch them either succeed or fail and be there for them both in terms of encouragement and in terms of care you know finally i'm dying for the next season of succession to come out what can we expect from it i can't tell you that 
course I'm, you I'm, I'm not in a position to tell you that. I'm not allowed to. Mm. I've, I've got signed NDAs up to the wazoo <laughs> and I'm not allowed to. You know, we, we continue on our path. Mm -hmm. um, we've still got a lot to sort out. Uh, the kids have got to come to some kind of realization that if they're, you know, what's going to happen to the business, who's going to inherit, who's not going to inherit, and we're coming to the sharp end now. Can you tell if we're going to see any new characters on the show? Uh, yes, there's a <laughs> couple of new characters, yeah. Okay. Coming in. Yeah, yeah. Brian, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much You're for welcome. taking the time out to speak You're to welcome. me, and very good luck with your book. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's very kind of you. Hi, I'm Brian Cox, and you're watching DXB Today.